Hey there, friends. It's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I have a new layout to share for Pink Fresh Studio, and I made this layout as part of the September challenge, and there it is. It's rainbows. Yes, my favorite. My favorite color scheme is rainbow, so you don't have to twist my arm to make a rainbow page because that is my favorite thing to do because you just get to use all the colors. You don't have to pick and choose. You use them all. So uh, you just saw the stamp set that I'm going to use there today. That is from Pink Fresh Studio. It's called the Adore Alpha Stamps. And I'm going to create a stamped background on some smooth, thick, white cardstock. And I'm going to do a lot of smudgy stamping, I guess you could call it. So I'm going to prep the paper with some clear gesso to allow me to add some water to this and to create lots of watery looking stamping. So I got all the colors that I have chosen here. I went through all of the little mini ink cubes from Pink Fresh and chose pretty much my favorite ones that I think will make a beautiful rainbow color scheme and I'll let you know what the names of all of these are. I've got my little very old very well-loved stamping block there and I'm gonna stamp the word love all over the background pretty much on the top half. Uh, I haven't chosen my photo yet. I don't have any of the collections as far as papers or stickers go. All I know is when I heard rainbow I went for it and thought, you know what, I'll worry about paper and stickers later. Let's just make this background and see what happens. So to get started at the top, I thought I would start with pink and then go through the rainbow. I wasn't really feeling red. I know red is a, a big color in rainbows, but I just went with pink instead because I was just feeling the pink. And I tried to use my ruler here to get love straight, the very first love. And I don't use it for the E, or maybe I do. Nope, I move, and look what happens. Look what happens. Do you see that? This is why I use a ruler. In the end, it's okay. I decide to kind of make all of them a little bit crooked in the end, because then, you know, if you make it crooked on purpose, everything looks crooked. And so it doesn't matter if something isn't straight. That's what I say. Make it crooked on purpose, and then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> anyway, so after I stamp the word love in each color, I'm going to take my little water pen, my water brush, and basically just smudge the edges like you see here. It looks like I splattered some water on it, or like I like to say, I left it out in the rain, and it got wet. And I'm going to do that with every color. And so in the end, it's going to look like a wet, rainbow, smudgy page of love which is a very odd description, but as we go, you'll see. So, all right, the dark pink color that I used first is Raspberry Bliss. This pink is Sparkling Rose. I'm also going to use, in the order that I'm going to go here, I'll just let you know what they all are. The light pink is Ballet Slipper. The lighter orange color is Apricot. Darker orange is Marigold. The yellow is Lemon Whip. Then we come around to the green, the, um, the first green there is Key Lime, the darker green is Mermaid Cove, light blue is Ocean Breeze, dark blue is Seaside, the next light blue is Summer Shower, purple is Candy Violet, and then the softer one is Soft Lilac. So yeah, I'm just stamping the word and then smudging it with some water. And this is happening because I use the gesso first. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I use gesso pretty much on every layout uh, when I'm using mixed media, which is practically every layout, uh, because it acts as a barrier between the water and the ink and the paper. You know, if, if I were to stamp all of these words or letters straight to cardstock with no protection, it's going to just stamp right down, and that's going to be it. If I add water to that, it's not going to smudge and blend, you know? The, the gesso is what allows all of the smudging to take place because it uh, allows everything to move on top of it for a little while before it dries. Now, it does eventually dry, and you can't really smudge it anymore, but for the, for the most part, when you first add something down and you add water to it, you're able to dab it up, make it smudge and blend, and do all sorts of things. So you have time if you mess up or if you stamp something crooked, 
<laughs> but you can see now the very first love with the dark pink with the E, it's okay that it's crooked. I just went with it and decided to kind of, you know, do the best I could. And I'm going to try to make the lines uneven a little bit. So there you go. I've got all those colors that I listed down. And I really like how this looks. I think it's fun. You definitely get the rainbow vibe going. And it looks like I stamped this and just... It, le it was left out in the yard. And you know, why would I be scrapbooking in the yard? But that's not the point. The point is, is it looks all runny and smudgy and I absolutely love this technique. And you can do this, anybody can do this. You stamp it down and you smudge the edges and that is it. That is it. Um, I'm adding a little bit of white acrylic paint on the top of it. I thought it would just add a nice little something extra, maybe to lighten things up a little bit. I like adding white splatters lately. I don't know, I just do. And I think they look really cool on top of the darker colors. So I love how that looks. All right, background's pretty much done. Now we're gonna work on the photo and everything else. I have a black and white picture here. It, this was actually recent from this year, a couple months ago, my sister and me. My sister and me? No, my sister and I, oh my gosh, got together with our mom for her birthday at the end of May, and we hadn't seen each other in forever since the lockdown happened in March, so we finally got together for her birthday, and it was our first time going to a restaurant since everything happened, and uh, we had a good time taking selfies in the car, so we always have to take funny, funny pictures and, you know, act crazy. So that's what this picture is, and I thought it would be fun, um, and I just printed it in black and white because... I wanted all of these colors to pop and I wanted the photo to pop and I like when I use or when anybody uses a black and white photo with a ton of colors behind it because the colors pop but the photo also pops. So what I did was I went through a couple of the most recent collections. This is the Let's Stay Home collection. And I just started picking out things that matched what I've got on my background. I'm going to wind up using a couple things from the My Favorite Story collection and the Noteworthy collection, which were the two previous ones that came out before Let's Stay Home. I'm going to cut out a couple circles from this Let's Stay Home paper. And I just started kind of randomly adding things. I used a couple of bows from Let's Stay Home. I'm mainly looking for things that match all of that stamping or close to it. And I'm going to just basically create this cluster of things to the kind of bottom left area of the picture. And I was, al I was also looking for things that had phrases or words or sayings that went with the theme of the picture, which was just basically getting together, having a good time, love, that sticker says let's chill, that little sticker on the side there that I don't know where it's going to go yet says dance party with my people, you know, just fun sayings. And I don't wind up using all of these. I uh, just kind of picked out whatever I could maybe use at this point and thought, well, you know what, it may look good here, it may not, let's try it and see. And I do pick out a couple of black elements because the photo has a lot of black in it, but I don't wind up using them. I feel like it kind of interferes with the whole rainbow vibe as I get going. You'll see what I'm talking about as I go. But I've chosen a couple of things to use and as I'm going through these stickers, I'm thinking, do I want to choose anything to add to the stamped part of the layout or do I want to leave it alone? Um, at this point, I, I don't want to add anything to it because I feel like it looks busy enough. It's bright. It kind of does its job with being the sole mixed media element of the layout. And I don't want to cover a lot of that up because I really do like it. Um, I'm adding some... Um, what was that? <laughs> adhesive foam. Lost my train of thought. Some adhesive foam behind my photo to pop it up. And then I'm going to just kind of start to add things here and there and see how it looks. I'm going to use a part of that light blue tag that I ran through my edge distressor there. I'm going to have that kind of peeking out from underneath the bottom of the layout. And here is where I'm trying to just fit all of these little circles together. I hadn't really thought about 
specific elements at this point, you know? I didn't think, well, am I going to use a bunch of circles or flowers? I kind of just went for it and used a little bit of, of anything and just kind of nestled it in there like Jen Scow has taught me to do and just see what fits where and what works in what place. I'm going to pull in some hot pink thread because I feel like hot pink is the first color up in the left hand corner. So I want to bring that color down to the bottom. And so uh, I like to use thread for that because it's easy, it's messy, it gives the whole effect of some texture and just a little bit of, you know, unruly chaos, if that makes sense, and which, which I like because <laughs> that's how most of my layouts are. So I'm going to just continue to play around with some of these stickers and things. And I really like how that little cluster is looking. So I'm going to start to glue things down. I know that that's where the photo is definitely going. And I do want the photo to be a little crooked. You can see there it's not perfectly straight. You know, all of those loves aren't perfectly straight. So why would I want the photo to be perfectly straight? Again, going back to my rule of if you make it crooked on purpose, it is okay. You don't have to worry about it looking straight. Although there are many times I do want things straight and that's when I use my ruler. And um, But sometimes, you know, it just depends. Every layout's different. So I just go with the flow. Uh, I've got some of those phrase stickers over there and I believe those were from the Noteworthy sticker sheet. And like I said, I'm going to start to glue all of these little circle elements down. And I rarely use bows on layouts, but I'm going to use two on this one. Who am I? I just like the way they looked and they matched. So I thought, you know what? We're going for it. I'm going to add a little bit of twine or cord to the tag because whenever I use tags, you know, they have those little holes in the end. I like to give them a finished look. So I add some, either some string or some thread or something there. This is a little label sticker from Noteworthy. And I liked that it was that perfect bright pink color. So I cut the label in half and I'm going to use part of it is just like a little piece of pink peeking out from underneath that tag. And then this is more of a purple circle sticker. So I thought, you know, I've got several circles on here. If I can find more circles, might as well just use them because they're working together really nicely in that cluster. And this is the dance party with my people sticker. I stick it right there as a test and actually wind up leaving it there. I forgot to go back and check it to see if I liked it there. And I guess I did because I never wound up moving it. So that's where it goes. And I didn't want to overlap too much more on top of the photo. Uh, I almost always layer a little something on top of my photo, whether it be a little tiny sticker or a flower or a leaf, but only if the photo has space to allow that. I never want to crowd whatever is in the photo and make it so busy that you can't really find the photo. Uh, I like that there, you see above our heads, we're in the car here. Uh, above our heads, there's all this black open space. I'm going to leave that alone because it kind of separates all those colorful loves from our faces. So it gives you a little bit of a breaking point where you can rest your eyes and it's it just separates the focus of the photo from all that color. Does that make sense? And I know I say, does that make sense a lot? But sometimes when I'm explaining things, it makes sense to me. And I try to explain it how my brain works. And so I, I want it to make sense to you guys watching. Um, but I like to have places on the page for your eyes to take a break because when you have all this color, you have all of these embellishments, it can be overwhelming. You know, it's like sensory overload. And so you need a little area where you get a little bit of a break. And so that's where that black space in the photo comes in and the white space at the bottom. And that also is something to think about when you add layers behind your photo. If you want your photo to kind of be separated from the busy background, that's where you bring in your pattern papers or your pocket life cards or whatever you have to separate a little bit. So when I added that yellow pattern paper and the tissue paper behind my photo, that also acts as a, a bit of a resting point. So I'm going to use these multicolored puffy alpha stickers from Noteworthy. 
for my title. And my title is just going to be, This Was Fun. Because it was. It was just a fun dinner. We were in the car acting goofy. Probably listening to the 70s on 7. Who knows what we were listening to. But it was fun. And I thought instead of doing one solid color with the title, I would just go and just continue on with the rainbow effect. And so those colorful stickers were perfect. And then I thought, you know, I want to add in this darker, more bold orange color. Yep, there's a little circle sticker with music notes on it. But when I started adding these orange stickers, I realized that that color orange was not in the stamping. So I'm going to come back in here in a minute with a darker orange ink and kind of add that to the orange section of the stamping to make it more true to that orange color. I'm trying to figure out where to put this little sticker here that says togetherness. Thought about layering it on top of the title, but eh, I didn't really like it. So I think it's going to go down at the bottom. So before I glue it down, I'm going to smudge some, not smudge, <laughs> stuff some light blue thread under that pink love circle just to have a little bit of something coming out from underneath that and to uh, bring in some more of that light blue color, which I think looks pretty down there. So here's where I'm gonna come back with the stamping. And this color is more of that deeper orange color. This is called Clementine. And I'm gonna just go right back over a couple of the orange letters and do the same technique I did in the very beginning. And it still works great, even though this is the next day. Um, and it's not really interfering with the green below it. I'm careful to not add too much water to reactivate the green and create an ugly brownish color. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to do a couple of letters just to darken up the orange section a little bit since I added in some of the darker orange embellishments at the bottom. And it's not a perfect match by the time I add the water and it dries, but it's, it's closer than it was. And I think it looks, it looks good. And this is also an example, you know, if you add too much water to the stamping, you can always stamp back over it and redo it. Because when I see my finished photo of this layout, I wish I would have stamped back over on the upper right corner that light pink and the light yellow because it turns out so light that it's it almost looks really pale compared to all of the other colors. But uh, it, it's fine. Um, I added a couple more little uh, epoxy circle stickers there from the Noteworthy collection. And then I thought I would bring a pop of that deep orange over to the right of the photo. So I'm just going to use a sticker from Let's Stay Home and just have it peeking out from the right side there. And then for my journaling, I'm going to add it over here to the left of the title because there's really no other place for it to go. I didn't want to put it too low down at the bottom of the layout. So we're going to go over here to the left. And I do like to use my ruler. That's one thing I do want perfectly straight is my journaling. Everything else can be crooked, but I want my journaling to be straight. You know, if I'm going to be able to read it later, it needs to be straight. So, and I'm using a black fine tip Sharpie there. But anyway, that's the final layout. I really like how this turns out. You can see what I'm talking about. The, the lighter colors in the upper right got really, really light when I put this in my um, window to take the picture. But I love all of these colors. Here are all the close-ups. I took a lot of close-ups of the stamping so you can see what that really looks like up close. But it was really easy to make this background. Um, I hope you give it a try. I've made several layouts uh, where I stamp and then activate it with water. And I just love that technique. I think it's fun. If you like messy and blurry type of backgrounds like this, it's simple to do, you know. Uh, it works great with these Pink Fresh Studio ink cubes or their uh, bigger ink pads. I'll link everything that I used down below that you can get in the Pink Fresh Studio store, including these stamps, which are my fave. I love them. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I hope you play along with the challenge and make a rainbow layout. So check that over in our Facebook group. I'll also link that down below. So I hope you guys have a great week. See you next time.